and he piled upon the whale's white hump, the sum of all the rage and hate felt by his whole race. If his chest had been a cannon, he would have shot his heart upon it. Here's a look at the new X-06 Star Trek First Contact, Captain Jean-Luc Picard, one six scale figure. In the feature film First Contact, Picard must face his most fearsome foe, the one that damaged him to his core, the Bohr Collective. With no less than fate and all of humanity at risk, he must overcome his fear, shame, and thirst for revenge to save the entire galaxy from becoming the Borg. This one six-scale figure recreates this iconic character in an exquisite one-six detail. Standing approximately 12 inches tall, every element from his 24th century tunic to his custom black boots is authentically reproduced. The original portrait sculpt of Patrick Stewart has an authentic hand-painted likeness. Just before we get the review started for First Contact Picard, I'd like to thank the folks over at XO6 that kindly provided the sample of Star Trek First Contact Captain Jean-Luc Picard that we could have a look at in this review. Seeing as Picard does technically mark the second Star Trek character that they have released, it makes for a better comparison to be able to bring in Lieutenant Commander Data, who also is from Star Trek First Contact. While they seem to share similar enough bodies, it seems as if just by probably the virtue of the fact that Picard is wearing a jacket as opposed to a full jumpsuit. Data, as a result of that, looks a little more slender. Data also appears to be a lot taller as well. For other comparisons, we can also bring in the Quantum Mechanics release of Star Trek's Captain Picard. This is from Star Trek The Next Generation. I have some difficulty getting this guy to stand up. There we go. He is notably a lot shorter, and because he's a lot shorter, his head also seems a little bit bigger as well proportionately, I think the first contact release from X-06 pairs a little bit better proportionately. And of course, he fits a lot better with the previously looked at data as well. For the figure, the first thing we'll have a look at is the included hexagonal display stand, which if you are lucky enough to pick up the data, or if you've watched my review of the data, go feel free and check that out if you get a chance. It so happens to be the same stand that also came packed with that figure as well. The top of the stand depicts the transporter pad but it gets much more elaborate and cooler than that. Just to bring in data so you can see, yeah, they are in fact the exact same. And the neat thing about these is that you can actually lock them together, interlock them together. What you get with these figures is you get this little clip piece right here. You can see that there's an open slot right in the middle of things, and it fits just onto the, the little, there's like a little bar that runs across. That actually is the same place where these necks adjust to as well, or plug into. But basically that just fits into the slot like that. And then if you have another display stand, you literally just take the two and attach them together. Though I find it's a lot easier to put the stands together first, maybe even lay them down on a flat surface. Take the connecting prongs and fit them together like this, and then you've got two connected display stands. And you pretty much can continue that trend all the way around if you want to. Or what you can also do too, like we did with, with data, just detach this. Make sure, of course, you don't lose this. And then when you get these stands to come also packed inside the tray, you get this piece right here, which serves to be the larger transporter array. So as opposed to the individual pads, you get the larger transporter array. What you'll do first is detach the neck and make sure, of course, you take this piece as well. These just basically, you take the one part and you just attach it to the other end. But this prong fits the same way as those connector plugs. It fits right into that, that little ledge of plastic right there. Once that's removed, all you then do is take this clear, I'm assuming it to be acrylic plastic, and you're just going to detach it. You have to remove it from the corners, free it from all the corners, and then you can gain access to the overlay. Now really, if you even just leave this off and you keep just the bare bones base on its own, it actually works to be just a great display stand on its own if you want to have the figure standing on top of that. But we're not going to do that. What we're going to do instead is we're going to take this piece, this overlay, and again, you just want to line things up, then take the top sheet, that clear acrylic once again, and you're going to fit it into the corners. Now, it actually helps one thing that they put a, like a little groove on the outer end of it. So it sort of helps to kind of keep things in place, providing, of course, you're not shaking it around like I'm doing right now. And just fit this over top like that. And you basically want to get it into the corners like that. 
You're going to do the exact same thing on data, and I won't spend the whole time to do it. I'll just quickly show you what it looks like when it's put together. But you're basically going to do the exact same thing with data. And then you can actually connect the two together. And I think the way that you want to really connect them is where you're going to continue the shape of the circle. So you really don't want to obviously have it like this. You're going to probably want to have it like this, like I said, to form the larger transporter array. And then from there, you can actually have multiple figures standing together as if they're all standing in the same scene together. And I think that's really neat the way that they've done that. The last thing that you get along with the display stand is this little clear ledge clip. Again, we got this also included with data. This locks into the same place. Again, you've got the little prong gap space there, and that just fits down on the front. Now, the thing about data, though, data came included with a schematic, as you can see, of the Starship Enterprise NCC-1701E. And that can fit then into the front here kind of serving as a front placard, or I guess if you want to have it displayed behind the figure, you can also do that as well. I did notice, though, my Picard didn't come included one. It did, in fact, come included with a clip, but it didn't come included with a schematic. So I'm not really sure if the figure is supposed to come with one or not. Schematics aside, though, let's have a look at the accessories that come along with the figure as well, starting first, the TR-590 tricorder. The tricorder seems to be the same one that comes along with data and works the same way that you can take the bottom half of the tricorder and open it up. It doesn't actually have a hinge as much as it has two panels of magnets and those attach to one another. The thing you will want to be careful of though, while it's in a folded up state like this, is that this flap is prone to sliding back and forth. So if you are picking this up and you accidentally put too much pressure on this and it goes shooting off the side of the room, it may be a little harder to find. So just be careful when you're picking this up. Is it me, or does this look a bit like a somber robot? Very neutral, expressioned robot face. Okay, I'm probably the only one that thinks that. The details, though, so small they are, captured so nicely on Exo's part. I mean, what you would expect to see on a normal one-to-one -one scale tricorder has been replicated very nicely on this smaller rendition. Again, it does open up the same way, and it doesn't work so much on a hinge, so basically what you're doing is you're just opening it up and then reattaching it. You could try your best to actually open it up as if you would open up a tricorder, but again, the end result is you're only going to have the, the two halves separated at birth, and you're going to have to put them back together again. Again, I just want to draw your attention to the amount of work. Granted, yes, these are labels, but the fact that they've accurately recreated a tricorder at this size is quite the feat on Exo's part. Now, this folds up again very carefully, and it does also come included with a little holster. You can slide this into just into the holster like that. And even on the back of it, there's also magnets as well. I made the ill mistake when we had a look at Data's review. Actually, I had indicated that it was supposed to go on one side of the figure. And I described it correctly on the one side of the figure. But then I mirror flipped it when I actually put it onto the figure. I think with Picard, actually, his tricorder sits on this side. Because most of the images, when he does have the portable phaser, it seems to be sitting on this side of his body. Anyways, though, you're going to just take the, the holster and you're going to line it up here and it just sits to the side via magnets. Sort of sits just beyond the seam line of his pants. The other accessory, while we're certainly speaking of portable phasers, he comes also included with the little Type 2 hand phaser, which we can have a look at right now. Coined the Dolphin, the little portable hand phaser, of course, is something that he uses in the movie. Though most of the time I tend to picture Picard wearing or carrying around the phase rifle instead. But it's nice to see that they included such a piece. Painted so perfectly in nice metallic silver. It does have little buttons on the top, the little red button down below. And the little marker of just the intensity of the phaser of what it's being set at. This can fit into his hand or again can fit into the holster, which sort of looks a bit like a slipper. Maybe in something I even commented on when we had a look at data. Anyways, though, you're going to take the Type 2 hand phaser and just slide it in place. And again, most of the stills I've seen online have had Picard with it on this side of his body. Where again, when I had a look at the data, I think I said it was on the right side or the correct side. But then in the video, I ended up flipping them around by mistake. Lastly, for the figure's remaining firepower, Captain Picard comes in clue with a Type 3B phaser rifle. Yes, you're correct. It's the same phaser rifle, really, that came included with Lieutenant Commander Data. In fact, Data came also packed with that Type 2 hand phaser and the tricorder that we looked at earlier. 
So far, I'm don't, not bothered either by the fact that X06 are giving us repeats on the way of accessories. I mean, after all, these would be standard issued weapons and tools that they would be using. A Starfleet officer would be issued these, so it would make then some sense that so far Picard and Data would come with packed the same accessories. Now, of course, when we get, say, the likes of a Beverly Crusher, or maybe someone that's away on the planet like a Riker, then maybe, yes, we may get different accessories altogether. But so far, I'm pretty happy with the fact that we get the accessories that we get. Putting this to the side, and actually, this will likely be the way I'm going to display Captain Picard, but we'll talk more about that in a second. Let's talk a little bit about the hands, because, of course, all the things we just finished having a look at has to be held in hand. And we'll start first, somewhat redundantly, looking at closed fists. I just finished talking about the things I would like to have in his hands, and the first thing, of course, I'm looking at is closed fists. But I guess if you want to have angry fist-swinging Picard, then yeah, by all means, you can use these closed fists if you want to. I feel a little bit more better for the job. He does also come with a couple of uh, different hands for holding the weapons and the tools. So, like, for example, I'm going to go ahead and grab the tricorder. And actually, while I'm at it, too, I'll grab the Type 2 hand phaser. We'll start first the tricorder, because this is the hand that's good for holding the tricorder. Simply just remove it from its holster. And I always find it helps, too, to take this end piece off first, just in case, you know, you don't want to lose it. And this basically just slides into the hand. Like that. Kind of want to get it around the thumb. There we go. And you sort of want to brace it against the pointer finger and the thumb. And it, I mean, it's not going to go anywhere. And then once that's in place, then you're going to take the bottom half of the tricorder and sort of just detach it in there. And you see what you see what I mean? Why I would have wanted to detach the bottom end of it first, it's just because you're going to be having to fight it in between the hand. You don't want to then have the risk of this falling off and just get that all lined up. So that's the hand for holding the tricorder. On the other end of it, I guess on the other hand of it, he also has this hand right here for holding the Type 2 hand phaser. So we'll go ahead and just take the dolphin and slide it just down the fingers like this. And if you get it low enough down, he actually has, they sculpted it in such a way where it actually has Picard resting on the actual trigger button. And that's really neat the way that they've done that. Then when we get to the other hands, these are the hands for holding the phaser rifle. The first hand we're going to tackle is the one that actually goes around the grip. And I find it helps if you take the phaser rifle, actually, and you put it in this way, this sideways. And I know, I, I know what you're thinking. Why are you putting it in the wrong way? Well, there's a method to my madness. If you put it in like this, and then you twist it around, now all of a sudden you've got it lined up. And all you have to then really do is just take the pointer finger, right? Bring it up to the top, and you've got everything perfectly lined up. And then this other hand right here, literally on the other hand, sort of serves as a brace to hold the undercarriage of the phase rifle. If you want to have the figure displayed like that, of course. After much deliberation, though, we can finally have a look at Captain Jean-Luc Picard's portrait. And I will say, as I've said when we had a look at the data, I think they really captured the likeness here of actor Patrick Stewart. To be fair, though, this is an older Patrick Stewart. So again, when we move this one slightly over and bring in the quantum mechanics one, short of the fact that this guy is a little more on the shorter side, you could believe that the two characters are of the same line, and that simply this is the more aged Captain Picard when you're comparing the two. Speaking of, though, comparing the two, I can't help but notice how much more warmth there is in the skin tone of this Picard versus the original one from Quantum Mechanics, which is a little more off-yellowed and much fairer in skin. The side profile, though a little fuller on the aged Picard, again is a very believable transition of age, the more youthful Picard, as youthful as he was back in the day, to the more older Picard with the slightly more softer, saggier skin. You can see the wrinkles are represented rather nicely here in Picard, even to the corners of his eyes you can see there as well. Paint on this guy is fantastic. Which is one of the things I really complimented XO for doing, especially when it came to Data's coloring. I thought that Data's coloring was pretty good and spot on, and I feel the same way about Picard as well. I don't feel like there's a case necessarily where seeing it from certain sides loses any bit of the likeness. I feel it looks just as much of Picard from the front as it does from the side. One nice touch certainly as well to show that he's aged is the fact that they've actually put the more flappier skin in the area of his neck. I'm not sure if there's an actual scientific term for that, but as you can see, the more softer, relaxed skin in the area of his neck. Certainly that happens to all of us as we get a little bit older on in our years. 
But I'm very, very happy with this head sculpt. And again, for one other comparison, we can just move this guy over and bring in the mentioned already data, who again, both examples I feel are really spot on likenesses of not only the characters, but the actors, of course, known for playing these roles. Uh, as for the, certainly the uniforms, now this is something we can talk about for the uniforms. There's a slight variation specifically to Picard because Picard's actually is a jacket. It's not a full jumpsuit. When we looked at Data, Data had a jumpsuit that zipped from sort of the crotch area all the way up. It really wasn't ever to be intended to be removed, but it certainly as a jumpsuit made for more slender looking Data when he had him on display. Picard is a little more fuller, not so much necessarily in the legs nor in the sleeves, but he seems a little more fuller in the in the torso area here, simply because he's got a little more fuller of a jacket over top of it. Now, whereas Data's didn't really have the means to open up, you couldn't really remove his, his clothing, you could actually hear with, with Picard. The front of his jacket is Velcroed. And once you unvelcro that, you can actually take the jacket off its entirety if you want. And you can either have it displayed without, mind you, of course, you'd see the suspenders, or you can also have them displayed with this. And this is the vest that he wears in first contact. This gives him the opportunity then to walk around the decks of the Enterprise with more the little lighter of an, of an outfit for him to be wearing. I mean, it sort of does still, if I fold this over, mimic the jacket right down to the fact it still has the, the logo there, the Starfleet badge. It doesn't have, of course, the pips, because the pips are still going to be attached to the collar underneath. But all you're literally really doing is just detaching the hands, and then you're going to take the jacket right off. Speaking, though, of the hands, I know we already talked about the various hands that he comes included with. I mean, the hands are nicely sculpted. If I could offer up one critique, though, the sleeve, as well as the peg that they use, is notably a different color than the flesh tone that they use for his hands. Providing you have the, the jacket far enough down on his hands, then you really don't see it. If, however, though, you bend the arm forward and that sleeve happens to ride up, then yes, you do see a slight discoloration because of the plastic that they're using for the body underneath. As I didn't want to bore you guys, I actually just took the jacket off behind the scenes. I just simply removed the hands, slid the jacket off the sleeves. It actually helps to bring the arms back when detaching and while taking off the jacket. And then once that was off, I just kept the arms back like this and I put the vest back on. That's all I really did. And then, of course, I put the hands back on as well. The closure of the vest works the same way as the outer Starfleet jacket. You have two halves of a Velcro, and you just fold them in on each other. And if anything, the hardest thing is just trying to make sure that they're close enough together that you're hiding the Velcro. It almost is even more helpful if you get the top end going and then sort of just follow it down further, just because there's a little more thickness of material up the top there. And once that's in place, it certainly makes for a much leaner looking Picard. He doesn't look as full when you have him on display. And in fact, just putting the figure down again, we can then bring in the likes once again of Data, just so you can see. While Picard may have looked a little fuller, yes, before, once you do take off that outer jacket and you put the vest on instead, I feel like they're a little bit more scaled appropriately to one another. At least Picard doesn't look as full as he did before. Might as well keep this outfit on as we look at the figure's articulation. So, for the figure's articulation, Captain Jean-Luc Picard does have a ball joint. It's a little harder to see, mind you, because it's underneath the collar piece here. But the head rotates all the way around. It hinges up, and it hinges down, and it also rocks back and forth. You know, one of the things I tell you, though, about Picard, kind of like the fact that you can remove his jacket, because if you ever have difficulty for some reason taking off his head, I'm not sure why you would want to take off Picard's head because it doesn't come with an alternate head sculpt. But let's just say you have problems with this collar. The collar sometimes does sit really far in there. And I found it was very much helpful to take the jacket off and kind of get my hand in there and be able to fish the turtleneck back up. And I think it sits a little bit better, better and more comfortable, I think, at least on Picard's head than did on Data's. As for his arms, though, his arms hinge out. I couldn't help but notice as well that when I'm moving the arms out, there seems to almost be like a ratcheted joint. There almost seems to be points where it stops and sort of hits a ledge. And as you move it a little bit further, it makes a clicking sound. And that's the same on both, of course, arms. The arms move forward, the arms move back. I mean, I suppose you could rotate the arms all the way around, but there's you're not really going to be able to do that with a human being anyways. And not to mention as well, the material is going to start wrapping itself up. 
By the way, I do like this material that they've used. It sort of has a bit of an elasticity to it. It has a bit of a stretchy nature, and it does actually fit rather nicely, conforming the frame of Picard's body. Still, again, you want to be careful that you want to bring those sleeves as far down as you can, just so you're not seeing those noticeable pegs. Even if they wanted to keep the plastic of the arms this color, I wish they could have at least used the peg color of the hands. At least because the pegs are probably the only thing you're going to see standing out from the sleeve. If they at least kept that the same color as the hands, but... Again, if you have the sleeves far enough down, you're really not going to notice it. He does have a swivel on the bicep area. Picard also seems to have a double hinge on the elbow, and you can also rotate the hands all the way around. As for his torso, I don't know why I'm waving my fingers so furiously around there. He does have an upper torso ball joint. The legs split out to about there. He has a swivel at the top cut of the thigh. I for a second thought that there was some padding that they added on top of Picard's legs, but I think those are just his legs. I think it's just the material that they're using for the suits seem to be a more thicker, denser material. Because there seems like there's padding, but I don't feel like there's actually padding on Picard's legs, if that makes any sense. The legs have a double hinge on the knee. And of course, he does have the little straps that go across the bottoms of his heels, similar to what Data had. Basically, like from the lower leg, it's very similar to what we're getting with Data. The feet move up and down. You can also rock them back and forth. So you can get some nice poses going with Picard. And of course, you can bring in that display stand we looked at earlier. Eventually, I would think that keeping in mind that X06 continue to put out brand new figures, so far it's already been also announced that they've put in, they're putting out a Catherine Janeway. And I'm pretty excited for that. Not only because I'm a big fan of Catherine Jan Janeway, but I also like the idea that she's got a Voyager outfit which happens to be my favorite of the Starfleet uniforms. I kind of hope at some point, I don't know if XO6 would still consider the idea, because I got to imagine if we're getting already a first contact Picard and we have already gotten a first contact data, they're probably going to continue the trend of releasing more first ca contact characters. But I hope after that's all said and done that they'll backtrack a little bit, sort of go back in time, maybe jump even into the Nexus to do it. And I hope maybe we can get ourselves some, uh, the Generations, Picard, like Generations Picard, Generations Data, wearing the Voyager outfit that we're going to be getting with Catherine Janeway. That's the kind of thing I'm excited for. I Obviously, they couldn't release just standalone uniforms because in many of the cases, like Data, for example, you can't take off his uniform to put on a new uniform. But I hope at some point, please make it happen, X06, if we can get ourselves some Generations-looking Starfleet officers from the Starfleet, from the Starship USS Enterprise. Captain Jean-Luc Picard now marks the second figure that X-06 have produced for their brand new Star Trek six-scale figure line. Right underneath, of course, the heels of Lieutenant Commander Data, which was the first to market their entryway into the new space of six-scale figures. Data really was the thing that told the collectors out there, this is what X-06 as a company is able to produce. This is the level of standards that you should expect to see with future figures moving forward. Data, I still question why they would have done him as a first figure. The difficulty of just getting not only the likeness of Brent Spiner down, but able to still replicate the same skin pigmentation that he has from the series and in the movies. And yet, I feel like D Data not only knocked it out of the park, but set the bar pretty high. That, as a result of it, puts a lot of pressure then on the shoulders of this dear captain. And yet, Captain Jean-Luc Picard, I love it just as much as I like the Data. The likeness bears strong of resemblance to the actor, of course, Patrick Stewart, playing the dear captain for all those years of the TV series, and of course, branching out into the movies, this being the second movie, First Contact. I think the likeness is fantastic on Captain Jean-Luc Picard. The very idea as well, going back to a point I mentioned earlier, the fact that you can take off his outer Starfleet jacket and instead have him wearing the vest is a detail that you saw in the film, but you didn't think a company would be able to incorporate into a six-scale figure, and yet they've successfully done it as well. Granted, yes, the figure does have the same accessories as the data that we got before. I don't think that really bothers me at all, because again, they're going to be all part of the crew of the Starship Enterprise, then yes, they're going to be getting probably those standard-issued tricorders, the standard-issued phasers and phase rifles. And yeah, when it comes to displaying these figures, I'm probably going to be displaying them differently anyways. Captain Jungler Park Picard is a nice looking figure, and I think when it comes time to displaying this guy on the shelf, even though part of me would have wanted to go with the original look of having him wearing the full uniform, because I tend to think of Picard in the movie as wearing the vest and wearing, carrying around the phaser rifle, this I think is likely going to be the way I'm going to display the figure, and again, he looks fantastic. A big thank you again to the folks over at X06 that provided the sample, this early sample copy, of the first contact 
Star Trek First Contact, Captain Jean-Luc Picard, that we could have a look at in this review. What do you guys think of the figure? And if you did manage to pick up the data, also let me know down below your comments on what you guys think of this figure line so far. As it right now goes, we've already got data. We have Jean, Jean-Luc Jean Picard from First Contact. And then just taking a bit of a break, I guess, from First Contact, XO6 are now planning for their next release, Captain Catherine Janeway. And again, I'm super excited for that. If you're a big fan of Star Trek, definitely I would say get on board this line while the figures are available. Uh, if you guys are also new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Turn the bell notification on and making sure, yes, you're keeping your peepers peeled because there will be, in fact, more videos coming your way. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time.